it's some good weather, so shall we turn these on and we'll go and see if we can find this male. Let's do it. Yep, yeah, okay. I'm on with you. Yeah. Yep, yeah, let's go have a look. I really like Escalapian snakes. I personally find them to be completely fascinating. They're non-venomous, but they're quite big compared to our native species. Their big males can grow close to a metre and a half long, with females sort of topping out more like a metre. So they're certainly bigger than grass snakes and they're far larger than adders or smooth snake. These snakes are normally found in Central and Southern Europe. They were introduced here by accident in the 1970s by the Welsh Mountain Zoo, who had some captive animals that escaped and they're making a go of it. They're surviving, they're breeding successfully. And people are certainly surprised when they find out that there's a non-native species of snake that climbs trees and bushes living alongside them in North Wales. There really is so much we actually don't understand about them. I'm getting in picking up towards the house. Let's go and have a look. One of the things we're doing is we try and get a detailed understanding of the lives of individual snakes by implanting radio transmitters inside the snakes. That emits a radio frequency. It just sounds like a beep. That allows us to follow them around every day, see what habitats they use, and build up a far greater understanding of how they behave and what they do living in the UK. I'm definitely getting a stronger signal this way. Even with this amazing equipment that can pinpoint them to within a metre, it's so hard to find them. You could literally be on top of the snake and not know sometimes. We're just going to find Lauren because she's tracking a big adult male Escalapian right now. The males are moving a lot because it's their breeding season. So the males are generally kind of frantically searching around looking for mates. And this time of year, we see them move really long distances, five, 600 meters, even in just a few hours. How's it looking, Lauren? So he definitely looks like he's in this left hedgerow. He is currently moving, so it's hard to pinpoint where exactly he is. They're so cryptic. They always move in deep, dense vegetation. They really don't like to be seen on the surface. They've got aerial predators that will come down. Buzzers will swoop down and take them as they can. He's actually, he's on the other side. Despite the fact that we don't always get to see the snake, we do still gather valuable data on what they're doing. We know down where it is, we take a GPS point, and then we can use that to build up an impression of their home range size and also their habitat use. So walking around and trying to actually just find snakes by looking is really difficult. So one of the ways we actually improve our odds is we put down squares of roofing felt onto the floor. And because they're black, they heat up in the sun. And when the snakes find themselves underneath, they get nice and warm, so they seek them out. And that really improves our chances. Anything under that one, Lauren? No, nothing under this one. It particularly works well for juveniles. Have you got one, Lauren? I found a snake. <laughs> Here Incredible. we go. Yeah. Okay, so what's really cool is if we catch them at this age, we have a chance to mark them. And that way we can actually, if we catch them again in subsequent years or even after a few months, we have an opportunity to understand how quickly they grow and whether there's kind of variations in that growth. So we'll have a look along the body. And if it is marked, you'll see a really bright orange blob. Ah, uh, yeah, there we go. So that mark tells us that this is a snake that we've captured before, which means we'll have a history for it. And that's really exciting because that will give us an opportunity to see whether or not it's grown. And interestingly, what we see is that there is massive variation in growth. Snakes which are the same age, some of them may scarcely be bigger than this, which is barely bigger than a hatchling, while others will be close to adult size. It really seems to depend on how much food they manage to find. There are approximately 70 adult Escalapian snakes in this area. We found that out by doing our mark recapture study. And on any given year, there might be up to 120 juveniles kicking around. From what we've seen, the population probably isn't expanding very much by virtue of the fact that the area they inhabit isn't actually expanding. But they are breeding successfully every year and the population as it is seems to be quite stable. <laughs> 